So the Aptos token has just started trading in the last few moments and the VCU dump fest has already begun. As we can see from this, straight on CoinGecko, down 35%. The only people holding these tokens are the VC investors behind this one. No community tokens released as of yet. And so this is literally just a grift. And as you can see, the big drop off there after a rather large initial pump up to around 13, 14 bucks. It was even trading on some obscure exchanges at like $70 earlier, now down to about $8.67. Uh, so we're gonna look into this one, see why this one is a VC pump and dump and why to avoid. So first and foremost, what the heck is Aptos? So Aptos is a new layer one blockchain. It comes to us with the promise of being faster, cheaper, low latency, all the buzzwords, and effectively wants to be the Solana killer. Now the investors behind this are ones that were balls deep in Solana itself. They say in their blog, we welcome everyone to participate in this movement aimed to bring the masses to Web3 after more than four years of hard work from hundreds of contributors and hundreds of diverse community projects around the globe. We arrive at Aptos. We are proud to arrive here together for the people. Now the people primarily are the VCs which are backing them. So this is the former DM, the Facebook blockchain contributors, those guys who were working on that blockchain that was of course shut down in early 2022. These guys have released their own chain now called Aptos. So the unique selling point behind this is the fact they have Facebook devs. They also have their own coding language called Move and they probably can build out some really cool dApps due to the fact they have, you know, UI UX experience from Facebook, that kind of stuff. But that is pretty much where the unique selling points end for this one and where the egregious behavior really starts. This seems like a Silicon Valley VC dump fest in the making, which is currently actually ongoing here. Now I expect this one to be catnip for the next round of normies entering the space during the next cycle. I think this will be highly marketed towards those new entrants in the market who don't know what to look for. So we're gonna look at the tokenomics, which are a bit of a sham today. So this from Token Unlocks Calendar. So they go into some of the data as to some of the raises that have gone on for this token, Seed and Series A taking place earlier in March and July respectively of this year. Also another round in September. Uh, this one should be valued around $50 million. So Unlocks Calendar state, private and seed prices not available publicly. So we don't know what these guys got in at, but he says you can use these valuations to actually arrive at a bit of a price point at which these VCs will have entered and what they would want to dump at. So this actually values the company somewhere in the region of around 1 billion to 2 billion based on these early investments. Typically VCs wanna make at least a 10X on their investments. So anything around, you know, valuation of around 10 billion, $20 billion would be fair game for these guys to be dumping. The cabal of investors lead it up by Binance Labs, of course, behind Binance Exchange, FTX Ventures, FTX Exchange, and the likes of Multicoin Capital. Those are the ones who were very early into the Solana ecosystem. I want to repeat the game here over on Aptos, plus a list of other notable VCs there. Now, at this point in time, Aptos themselves have not listed a detailed plan for the tokenomic structure. However, this was leaked via Upbit over in China. They put out a full investor report on Aptos and seem to suggest this is the supply or emissions curve for the token. Major dump off gonna come around October slash November of 2023, one year after the mainnet launch, as this is when a load of the insiders, the seed investors, etc., will get a ton of their tokens unlocked. But this one is literally gonna hyperinflate at that point, something like the Zimbabwe currency. So as Kobe pointed out here, and this was, you know, the subject of much drama and much talk over the last 24, 48 hours in crypto here, it's not great that FTX and Binance are listing Aptos without any tokenomics transparency at all. Surely it should be a prerequisite to list something that users can have some basic information on so we know exactly what we're buying. So this is the problem here. Uh, people are gonna be buying this token but not realizing what the hell the emissions curve is. He then says, did I miss something? Laugh my ass off, sigh, look at the tokenomics. From the FTX exchange here, $400 million was the initial raise. FTX jump, A16, Coinbase, Binance, all of those. And the token Aptos will be used for on-chain governance. So the token holders will be able to vote on-chain for various reasons, upgrades to the tech, any changes to the emission to the supply curve, that kind of stuff. But the people who own the token are the VCs behind it. So not very inclusive. And as they say, for the people, sounds like pretty much it's for those VC investors. So DC Investor chimes in here, the emissions and supply schedule are not even released, but FTX and Binance have no problem listing it. Listed 1am on both exchanges here, October 19th. 
the L1 slash VC pump and dump grift is getting even more brazen. He legit did not think it was possible, but here we are. Wouldn't surprise me if we have perps before supply data. So at this point, no definitive supply data. We don't actually know the number of circulating tokens on the market for this one. Uh, but as you can see, Binance will list Aptos and then down here, you can do it on margin and then FTX, spot and perps listed. So what these VC investors can do is hedge their bets here, go short on the perps contracts, and you're gonna get a chart very much like the Solana ecosystem or maybe ICP over the last cycle, where they just go down only because these guys are getting all the tokens emitted to them and then they can just short the futures, sell the tokens as they unlock and they are in a brilliant position to just continually dump on top of retail and make off like kings. So here is the Aptos tokenomics overview that they've released, but there isn't too much detail, too much nitty gritty, and there's a lot of word salads within this one. And it seems they're trying to hide the actual amount of tokens actually out there, the amount of circulating supply, etc. So this one has an initial supply of 1 billion tokens at TGE, and they split them out as follows. So 51% to the community, and then around 49% to essentially the insiders, core contributors, foundation, and investors. So here we have the distribution for the community and Aptos Aptos Foundation, these ones here and these ones here, around 60, six and a half percent of total tokens being lumped into this one paragraph here. But however, as you can see, a majority of these tokens, 410 million of them, are held by the Aptos Foundation. So doesn't this mean that the foundation amount should actually be a way higher and the community amount way lower to the tune of 410 million tokens. This seems to me that they're just mixing and matching where you're putting them in these various structures and really trying to make retail confused as to where these tokens are gonna go. It's gonna to be to the ecosystem, any new projects, that kind of thing, or just staking rewards. And the people who can stake this token are the VC investors. So in this, they actually assign 125 million APT tokens to the community category directly, 5 million to the Aptos Foundation, and one 120th, so over the next 120 months, they're going to be unlocking a load of tokens each and every month for the next 10 years, making this one highly, highly inflationary. Maybe there's going to be a token airdrop for early adopters of the network, maybe worth trying to get involved with that, but certainly would not be buying this one with my own cash. So into the most egregious part of this distribution schedule for core contributors and investors. All investors and core contributors are subject to a four-year lockup schedule excluding staking rewards. And then go down here to note both unlocked, i.e. tokens that are available for distribution and locked tokens. So the tokens that should be locked by the VCs, you know, they're hundreds of millions of tokens that they own are able to be staked and those staking rewards will be liquid. So this is another way they can dump on your head. Imagine owning upwards of half of the tokens out there right now, being able to stake them and then those sweet, sweet staking rewards coming directly to you and then you can just dump them in perpetuity onto retail. That is exactly what is gonna happen with this one and really does leave a very sour taste in your mouth. In terms of token unlocks, no token unlocks for the first 12 months, then the 13th month, after mainnet launch and each month after that, 348 of the tokens will start to unlock up to including the 18th month. It's just a word salad to try and confuse you as to the actual distribution of these tokens. And then 148 of the tokens unlock each month on the 19th of the month after mainnet launch. So this would be like 19th of November, 2023. And they would emit then for a 48 month period. So this is the emissions chart that they've put out here and published. The green community and orange, the staking rewards here. These two are the ones to take note of. As you can see, the staking rewards are rather steep. Maybe we're starting at like 200 million tokens, gonna to inflate up to the start of this time next year to to say 300 million tokens and then a big jump up here as we go through the next 12 months and those community funds are unlocking rather quickly here as well but we can't exactly see what they're going to do with these community funds a load of them are actually allocated to the foundation so this really is a very opaque tokenomic structure and just something i don't feel comfortable investing in Staking rewards are split between validator operators and stakers and are not subject to restrictions on distribution. So that is how we know staking rewards are liquid. This one inflates at roughly 7% annually, but it may be changed and all rewards and reward mechanisms are also modifiable via on-chain governance, which will be controlled by the VC investors. So the max supply of 1 billion will be a lot more than that. It's gonna be inflating at 7% annually. So uh, this one really is gonna inflate 
a lot. Then this was a funny one. Kobe just tweeted out, you can tell who bought the seed round because they're tweeting excited for the Aptos launch and the rocket emoji. And then someone grabbed a screenshot of their feed where they had one of those exact people just below. That is, of course, Avery Ching there, who is one of the co-founders of Aptos. But you can really see the shill boys on Twitter for Aptos really trying to pump this one out. And it really just feels like a BC pump and dump. Pay the marketers, get everyone excited for this one, release it. And as we saw from that CoinGecko data, it's just getting dumped like crazy. But who has tokens to sell? There was no ICO. It's the exchanges, it's the VCs who are making a serious bank right now. Uh, this was Paul Fidika. He was previously working on the Aptos staking module, but then had to stop because he was feeling rather uncomfortable about building on it. He says the tokenomics are dodgy. The exchanges are the ones who actually have the tokens to be selling tomorrow, i.e. today. There's no community run or permissioned validators and all 101 validators were handpicked by the Aptos Foundation and you had to sign an arbitration agreement in the Cayman Islands to be included in the validator set. Fake proof of stake, essentially Aptos is a permissioned chain using proof of stake for economics rather than security. So this is a walled garden centralized L1 and more specifically validators can be fired mid epoch by stake pool owners with just one transaction, no need to unstake or wait. There's a couple dozen private keys or less that can halt the network around one third of the stake or take over the network with two thirds of the stake with a few transactions. So this one promises high throughput, like 100,000 TPS plus, but this is a centralized chain. This is how Binance and the BNB chain was able to scale and pump out huge TPS. They just control the whole validator set. And this is exactly what's going on here with Aptos. So when it says for the community or by the people, for the people and all that kind of garbage, it really is just a marketing word salad to try and get people on board and think this is an inclusive environment which it really doesn't seem like it is. So coming to you very soon is all of this kind of stuff. The marketing Aptos ecosystem, look how big it is. It's burgeoning, massive TVL coming its way. All these cool DeFi apps are gonna come and jump on top of it. Well, don't say you haven't been warned. Drop your comments down below. What do you think about Aptos? Am I on the right tracks or am I absolutely off piste here? Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.